but in school, school for example. So a lot of my family and friends and just people that knew me, they all thought, you know, you should go to university, you're going to be an amazing scientist, you're going to do this and that. And um, I went through a point in my, in my life where I really just, I was surrounded by so much of that. And it was, you know, kind of, I was letting it get to me really. So it was hard to um, like, open that space up and get the clarity of what I wanted. That's in a way why I felt like having a passion helped me a lot because it kept pushing me forward, kept pushing me through all of that noise and having all the people be like, you know, you should do this, you should do that. And even myself at one point, like it, it just, I remember I worked <laughs> for a while as a waitress in a hotel in one of the restaurants of this hotel and it was just brutal, like the hours were brutal and I couldn't belly dance, but I was making like decent money for my age at that time. And it was just like, I couldn't sleep. I would cry every day. I'm like, I'm wasting my life, you know, like this is my life, this moment right here, this present moment is my life. And instead of finding a way to move myself forward and do something that I really love, I'm, you know, doing something that at that moment didn't really serve me. I understand that sometimes we might need to do these things, but um, I think if you do it with the intention of then moving forward towards your individual goals, it's worth it. If it's just doing it for money or because it's more socially accepted, then it's a good time to maybe sit in nature, like you said, and kind of reprioritize certain things. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, I mean, that. I think sitting in nature, I use that example because it's something that I do that clears up my mind completely. You get to realize that you are part of the earth just as much as everything else is around you. And again, not in a spiritual way, just in a really tangible way. Like you're sitting there and you're like, yeah, I'm just I'm just here temporary. You know, I'm using this body. I'm just floating around. And then whenever my time comes, I'll be gone before that. And it's funny because we live our lives so comparatively based on what we see around us, based on, based on our experiences. And that moment where you said, like, this is my life, that moment, it starts happening once. And then the more you compare yourself to others around you, the more it happens. But I think it's a decision you should make every day. You wake up saying, okay, this is my life. How are we going to treat this body today? What am I going to do proactively to move myself forward in a better way or move the world forward in a better way? Um, and I guess that's sometimes also obscured by the things that we decide to see on, you know, on social media or just in our communities. Um, but my next question, Gabby, would be now that we've you know touched a little bit on the struggles and, and whatnot, this is a, I guess you could say a tough question depending on how you look on it. Would you say life is a difficult thing? Um, I don't want to. I wouldn't really use the word difficult. Okay. I think it's. I see it as like a giant playground, to be honest, and you can fall off the swing and get hurt and then go back on and have the time of your life and be laughing like crazy and then, you know, go to the slide and like slide and you're going with the flow and then maybe you're just trying to climb up the slide and it's hard, you know, like it's just full of... Um, I like to look at different difficult moments because there, there's definitely difficult moments. I like to see them as contrast, like not as this is obviously it's tough. It's painful. We have to process it, go through it, but it's contrast. It's showing me what I don't want. So in a way, having these like painful, hurtful experiences are bringing clarity or bringing the clarity that I seek or that I you know, want to experience. Um, so that's the way I see it. I wouldn't say it's difficult. I would say it's a challenge in some ways, but it's just like a massive opportunity for evolving. So the path, I guess the path to, I guess the path to the end is challenging, but necessary. It's, the challenges are necessary to grow you step by step. I'll share with you another example of, just the things that, you know, have perhaps made me who I am today um, in elementary school and in, in high school, not really. I'm going to say more in elementary school. I was bullied a lot, for example. And, yeah. you know, you grow up and you're taught, 
my parents were very strict at the same time when i was first bullied they would say things like yeah you know <laughs> they would say things like um you know first tell on the kid if he's doing something wrong to you tell on the tell the principal tell this tell that and you know i was a little catholic religious boy growing up and i did that until i find so from that i learned that it wasn't helping me and my reaction was to make it violent and i started fighting like for 10 years i just anything that came in my way just get into a scrap because I thought that was the answer that one part took me to learn that the fighting was the answer the fighting took me to learn that it's not the answer so it's funny imagine the things that we learn now that we think ah this is the right way of doing stuff and two years later we realized oh no hold on this is wrong and because we and it's funny because we have these conversations with people and I might be talking to you and you might be saying, hey, you know, this is the right way of doing stuff. And I might be saying, no, this is the right way of doing stuff. And we're, bo we're both right because it works in our life. But we're probably just at different stages and we'll end up living that same lesson. That's true. It's crazy to think about it. I think it's just, it's a perception, you know, it's your perception. It's my perception, depending on what we live through and the state that we're at right now. And like you said, I think we're constantly changing and evolving. So two years down the line, you know, I may need to reintroduce myself. You never know um, where life is going to take you. But um, there's definitely like, like you said, seeing the, when you look back, you kind of see how everything led you to where you are today in a way that was just bumpy but it made sense that's kind of the way that I see it like if I hadn't gone through a bunch of experiences that I went through then I wouldn't be the person I am today you know I wouldn't have I probably would have never been interested in these kind of things like seeing how can I have a healthier mindset how can I evolve more in something that I love to do and I think some people by like kind of also denying their past, not sharing their past, or just like um, not giving it a more purposeful meaning, they identify with their past. And if you stay with that identity the rest of your life, there's not gonna be that much change. I feel like you at one point have to be like, okay, this was my identity in the past. I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna move forward and we're done with that. Now I'm another person obviously it's good to maintain like your your values you know there's you're not gonna entirely change but definitely the way you identify yourself i think also has a lot to do identity is such a big thing we're gonna get in, into that in a few minutes identity it's a very strong word and i'm gonna ask you a question related to that but so i've mentioned a few of the struggles that i faced and so have you i want to ask you about another one gabriella recently made a post on you know her instagram page or facebook page if you give her what's your instagram by the way gabby my instagram is gabriella belly dancer and gabriella is with one l so if you follow her gabriella with one lovely dance actually posted recently about one of the stories that she encountered when she was in argentina she was basically at gunpoint with someone and just her nerves i guess throughout the throughout the situation We'll save that for people to go and see and read that story because you did post that and I want them to read it to themselves and see what kind of answers they bring. What, what, what's something else that you can maybe share with people that follow you and even anyone watching that really something so extremely tough that you thought this is the end, I can't get through it and you still made it anyway? Um, those like violent situations, I've had another one also in Argentina, they were both super tough. Um, in the second one, I was chased by four men. I was alone at night and it was just super scary. I had to get in, in a stranger's car and I also felt like I received help. A struggle that I, I personally went through for years was eating disorders. I used to have a super negative, just body image and that was i think for me like going through that and overcoming that was probably the most life lesson giving process that i encountered because it was years and just um i think any eating disorder or any just like addiction it does have behind it a level of hate and like negativity towards yourself consistently that really pulls you back and at some point you 
it gets just like so tough that you're like, you know what, you have to evolve. And that's why in my case, going back to the same thing, but uh, saying I want to be a dancer, 